Hey, Faith Church, I love it when I get to bring you good news. You know, we have the most amazing church family that girdles the globe and one of our Household of Faith pastors. The Household of Faith is a group of pastors that Pastor David and I pastor, coach, and mentor. And somebody that's in our Household of Faith is a Faith Church favorite. I love it when we bring in a guest speaker and Faith Church goes so crazy that we know we have to bring them back. Faith Church, y'all, our city I know is gonna run today because Pastor Dury Thomas, he pastors a church in the Exuma Islands of the Bahamas and also in Florida in Port Charlotte. They go back and forth and back and forth. Have you ever known a pastor to do anything like that? Mm, yep, I know, I told you they are our style. He preaches the word, he's written five best-selling books and he knows Faith Church so well, he's gonna hit you with the Word of God in a way that is gonna make you shout. Faith Church, get on your feet and welcome in Faith Church style, pastor for the day, Pastor Dury Thomas. Come on online, you can do better than that. Let's give our great God a great praise, amen. Here's what I want you to do. Just before you're seated, I already see you starting to sit down, but just before you're seated, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you're in the right place at the right time for the right thing from the right God. And I know that's right. Okay, turn to the next neighbor because they don't believe you. Turn to the next neighbor. Say, neighbor, you're in the right place at the right time for the right thing from the right God. And I know that's right. Come on, if you believe it, put your hands together and give God a praise. You know, I am just so incredibly grateful that I get to be here with Faith Church. This is basically one of the favorite places of mine to come. And I'm telling you guys, this is an amazing place. And you should never take for granted what God is doing in this house. Come on, how much of you know that God's moving in this house? Never take it for granted. And I'm just so thankful for our pastors, Pastor David and Nicole Crank. And I want you guys to give it up. Come on, let's honor them. Hallelujah. Come on, let's honor them. And here's what I said. I said, notice I said our pastors. Notice I said our pastors because I consider Pastor David and Pastor Nicole my pastor. They've embraced me. They've encouraged me. They believe in the gift that God's placed on the inside of me. And that's why I could stand on this sacred stage today and speak to you because they believe in me. And so y'all didn't do good enough for that first honoring our pastors. And so if you love your pastors, man, I want you to show them they may be watching. And I want you to show them that we love them. Come on. Come on, let's give them a great round of applause and thank God for their leadership. Hallelujah. We thank God for their leadership, Pastor Austin, of course, and Pastor Morgan, the entire family. Man, we're just so grateful. Well, I am glad that I can come tonight to today. And um, to be honest with you, I've been looking forward to it because I'm so full. I'm so full. I'm so stirred up for this week. And to be honest with you, I'm telling you, I believe that God's going to speak to you specifically in this moment. I believe that if you're watching online, if you're at our Florida campuses, God's getting ready to speak to you in a significant way. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to prepare your hearts. Now, I'm family. I've been here before. So some of you know my story. And I know for those of you that don't know my story, you look at the scars. And I just want you to know I can't really get into my story about the scars today because, of course, there's a sermon in my scars alone. And if we go to the scars, I'd have to go to the scripture and start preaching about scars. But I didn't come to do that today. I came, amen, with a word in my, in my heart. And so if you don't know about the scars, go back to the last two times that I was here, amen. <laughs> go back to the last few times that I was here because I want to get into this word on today how much of you ready for the word how much of you ready for the word so I'm on an assignment and um, I'm going to read a scripture and it's coming from 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verses 8 I'm going to read from the message version of the Bible and it says we've been surrounded and battered by troubles but we're not demoralized we're not sure what to do but we know that God knows what to do We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. 
We have been thrown down, but we haven't broken. Come on, somebody ought to be shouting right there just from the scripture. Well, today if I could tag a topic to the text, it would be between a rock and a hard place. Have you ever found yourself there? Between a rock and a hard place? Pray with me. Father, I pray that I decrease, that you increase. Have your way today in this experience. I pray, Father, that they would see you and not me. Let the devil be horrified. May you be glorified and may your people be edified. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Between a rock and a hard place. What do you do when you've come to find yourself exactly where I just stated, between a rock and a hard place? In those moments when you look behind you, it doesn't look good. When you look to your left, it doesn't look good. When you look to your right, it still struggles and fights. When you look ahead of you, you don't see a way out. What do you do when you find yourself between a rock and a hard place? Well, just recently I found myself in this very same place in a circumstance, in a situation that made this idiom a felt reality for me. I found myself between literally a rock and a hard place. You see, right before I came to you guys, I was in a car accident. And I was going 50 miles an hour down a three-lane highway, and all of a sudden someone ran a stop sign and hit me from the left-hand side, and that car did a 360. And here's what happened. It went to the opposite end of that three-lane highway, and as that car, and I think they may have the, the pictures up there, as that car was on that, uh, spinning on that highway, it landed perfectly, watch this guys, between a concrete utility pole and a palm tree. Let, let me say that again. It landed perfectly between a concrete utility pole and a palm tree. I was between a rock and a hard place. I was between a rock and a hard place. And maybe, maybe, maybe some of you can't really shout in and rejoice over that car accident with me. But maybe if you think about it, the reality is a whole lot of you in this place have found yourself between a rock and a hard place. I'm talking about the fact that Langston Hughes, he said it like this, that life for us ain't been no crystal stair. It's been nothing but boards torn up. Some of you, if you be honest, your life has not been rosy, royal, or regal. It's not been palatable or palatial. Hallelujah. You've had problems and predicaments there are people inside here if they be real they can tell you that if you only knew what they went through you would begin to give God praise that they're still standing here come on if you only knew the fact that they have found themselves in so much circumstances and situations where they thought they wouldn't have made it I'm talking about between a rock and a hard place I'm talking about moments when there's more need than there is provision, where there is more month than there is money, between a rock and a hard place. I'm talking about times where you found yourself depressed and dealing with situations left and right. The, the doctor just gave you a bad diagnosis. Come on, your marriage, you said for better or for worse, and it went from better to worse. Come on, I'm talking between a rock and a hard place where it seems as though when you've gotten over the marriage, all of a sudden something goes wrong with the kids and you don't know what to do. You feel like you're about to lose your mind between a rock and a hard place. Is there anybody up in here or is it just me that ever found yourself between a rock and a hard place where you, you, you couldn't even make sense out of the circumstances and the situations that you've been in? It just didn't make sense. As a matter of fact, some of you, if you be honest, you've been trying your best in this season not to lose your mind because you found yourself between a rock and a hard place. Can I just get a witness inside here? Anybody ever been between a rock and a hard place? You see, I believe that no matter where we are inside our lives in this season, that all of us can relate to the fact that we've reached places where it seemed like it was a dead end, that there was no hope, that you were handcuffed by helplessness, you didn't know what to do, you were stuck like Chuck in a bad situation. But here's what I learned from this car accident when I found myself between that rock and that hard place, and that is that we serve a God that specializes in working miracles between rocks and hard places. Come on now, somebody. We serve 
serve a God that can do all things? Is there anybody up in here that God ever got you out of a rock and a hard place? Is there anybody that could stand to your feet and just give him a praise? Because if it had not been for him getting you out of the circumstances and the situations that you found yourself in, you wouldn't have been here today. Come on, Florida. Come on, online. I'm talking about finding yourself in a, between a rock and a hard place, and God worked it out. Here's what I could shout about. He uses dead ends and dark moments to show the authority and the power he has over our circumstances and our dilemmas that tries to paralyze our progress and stops us from fulfilling our purpose. See, I was reminded in this position that I was in that God, he protects us in purpose. That when we find ourselves in a situation that should have left us depressed, down, and dead, that God, he somehow reminds us that he's given his angels charge over us and no weapon formed against us shall prosper, especially when we're walking in purpose. Between a dead end, between a rock and a hard place. You see, the reason why I shout is because even though God didn't stop me from Getting the impact from that accident, I survived it. <laughs> Let me say it again. Even though I had to face the reality of that impact, I still survived it. Here's why I, I tell people I shout all the time. Because I'm a living witness that I survived stuff that most people wouldn't survive. Come on, let me say it again. I survived hits that most people wouldn't survive. And that's what people don't understand about your prayers. They wonder why you gotta shout that loud. They say it don't take all that, but baby, if you only knew the hits that I survived, I survived stuff that would have taken somebody else out. Come on, is there anybody that got a praise? Because when you think back of all the things that you survived, somebody shout, I survived it. Hallelujah, I could have focused on the fact that I just lost my car. I could have focused on the fact that this guy just hit me and caused me to get in between this utility pole that if I had hit the utility pole, I probably wouldn't have been here. If I had hit the palm tree, I probably wouldn't have been here. But here's what I did. I stepped back from the situation and I started to rejoice because I said, God, I didn't hit the utility pole and I didn't hit the palm tree. You placed me directly in the middle and because I still got breath, I got to praise. Let everything that got breath, come on, praise. Let everything that got breath. <laughs> you know, I, I know why a lot of people can't shout. Because, see, the way they look at stuff doesn't help them to leverage the limitations that they feel like they have. The truth of the matter is, we've got to learn to look at our circumstances from God's point of view. Let me say it again. The way you look at your situation or your limitation will cause you to either leverage it or for you to be weighed down by it. You know, I was reading a story, Pastor Phil, about a young boy that they had put inside a room. He was about 10 years old. And they had locked him. I don't know this is a cruel thing to do. But they had locked him in a room with nothing but manure inside of it. And when they came back inside that room, they met the young boy digging through the manure, and he had manure all over him. It was nasty, it didn't look good, but he was digging through that manure. And when they asked him, why are you digging through this manure? He said, because they gotta be a pony in here someplace. Come on, there's gotta be. See, he looked at the situation in a different way, and I'm here to tell somebody today that you've got to learn to look at your situations from God's perspective and not from man's perspective. Is there anybody here that knows that God always got a plan for the predicament that you may be in okay let's go to the text I'm getting ahead of myself but let's go back to, to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 watch what he said we've been surrounded and battered by troubles but watch this I like this because what Paul does in this text is he uses what we call conjunctions conjunction junction what's your function anyone remember that yeah, conjunction, what's your function? See, what a conjunction says is that a conjunction like but is a demonstrative conjunction. In other words, that word but tells me that it's going to kick the butt of whatever was before the but. <laughs> okay, let me say it again. That word but says it's going to kick the butt of whatever was before the but. 
And especially when God puts a butt in some place, it tells me that God's butt is bigger than everybody else's butt. <laughs> so watch what he says. Watch this. He says, we've surrounded by troubles, but we're not demoralized. He says that we do not know what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. Okay, y'all ain't getting it. What side of the butt are you on? Come on now, somebody. He says this. He says that we've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we are not destroyed. Is there anybody up in here that could give God praise for his butt in your life? Come on. Because when you should have been dead, God came and said, but, hallelujah. When you shouldn't have been here, God came around and said, but, everybody say, I'm thankful for his butt. Come on, Florida. Somebody ought to be giving God a praise online because God's butt it's bigger than our button. I've decided that I'm going to look through the lens of God's view rather than man's view. I've decided that in this situation and circumstance, even though I feel like I'm caught between a rock and a hard place, caught between options and obstacles that are unpleasant and undesirable, I'm going to look at God's perspective. Even though I serve in my life and sometimes I feel stuck and as though I'm crushed, I'm so grateful because at the end of the day, God specializes in working miracles in hard places. And I believe that not only will we survive when God gets in the middle of our circumstance with us, but in the words of Pastor Nicole, we will thrive. Hallelujah. Come on. How many of you know that God is getting ready to cause you to thrive in this season when everybody else is calling for, for an, a down economy? God says, you're in my economy. Come on now, somebody. When they're saying that there's recession, God says, I am the Lord that owns the earth and the fullness thereof. God is never a God in recession. He is a God of provision. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm going to thrive. Hallelujah. I could have faced the fact that I lost everything in that moment, but I leveraged God's view in my life. And here's what else, what else I discovered. I discovered that your greatest opportunities usually come right after your greatest obstacles. Because would you believe it? It was literally a few hours where Pastor Nicole gave me a call after that accident and said, Pastor Dury, what are you doing? Hallelujah, August 6th, because we need you at Faith Church. And I was like, look at what the devil tried to do. The devil tried to take me out because he knew what God had in store for me. And the only reason the devil is mad with you, the only reason the devil is fooling with you, the only reason the devil is trying to cause you to lose your mind is because he knows what God got in store for you. I'm preaching already up in this place is there anybody up in here know that you're valuable I like Isaiah 43 I gotta hurry up I like Isaiah 43 verse 3 to 4 it says when you're in rough waters you will not go down watch this I'm reading from the message version when you're between a rock and a hard place it won't be a dead end because I am God Faith Church, hear me today. He is saying to you, no matter what your circumstance, I am God. Because I am your God, your personal God. Everybody say, I got a personal relationship. Come on. The holy God of Israel, the Savior. I paid a huge price for you. All of Egypt and Rish Kush and Seba thrown in. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. How much of you just glad that God loves you? And because he loves you, I want you to know it doesn't matter what you find yourself in. He will never leave you. Somebody say, I'm not going down. Come on, you got to shout it so you make the devil nervous. Say, I'm not going down. So in our main text, the Apostle Paul, as if, if we, we look at the context of the main text, the Apostle Paul, when he starts off 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1, he uses the word since inside the text of the message version. In the NIV, he starts off with the word therefore. So he says, since God has so generously let us in on what he is doing. He says this, he says, therefore, or sense. So as I was studying, I said, man, I got to make sense out of the sense. And I got to see what the therefore 
is there for. And so it made me go back to the text of 2 Corinthians chapters 1. And I read in verses 1, 8 through 11, it says, we don't want you in the dark, friends, about how hard it was when all of this came down on us in the Asia's province. It was so bad. Watch what the Apostle Paul said. We didn't think we were going to make it. We felt like we had been sent to death row, that it was all over us, over for us. As it turned out, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to us. This doesn't make sense, Paul, because you're saying that the bad was the best thing that could ever happen to you. See, what we thought was meant to hurt us, we discovered was really meant to help us. Let me say it again. This is what Paul is preaching. He said what was meant to destroy us, God was, usually, was really using to develop us. What was in our perspective our, for our bad, it turned out for our best. Come on. Is there anybody? up in here know that your God can turn the things that the enemy meant for evil into your good come on now somebody okay we got a few minutes and y'all ain't shouting so maybe I got to call Joseph up here to testify because Joseph would tell y'all that he found himself between a rock and a hard place when his brothers threw him in a pit but watch this Joseph said to his brothers I ain't mad at you look at your neighbor say I ain't mad at you Hallelujah. I'm mad at you. See, because you, you, you sold me, but God sent me. Hallelujah. What is Joseph saying? He's saying what you thought was going to be for my bad. God turned that thing around and he made it for my good. And not only for my good, but for your good. Come on. See, people don't even know the things they're putting you through. God's going to use you to help them to get out of what they're going through. Let me say it again. They don't even know the things that they're putting you through. God is about to flip the script and use you to help them to get out of what they're going through. Somebody ought to shout right there. What was supposed to help us, hurt us, ended up helping us. Come on. Hallelujah. And so God, Joseph said, sent me, but you sold me. See, I thank God that he can turn my bad for my good and what seemed like hell, he could use it for my help. Somebody ought to give God a praise right there. In 2 Corinthians 1 verse 11, he said this, instead of trusting our own strength or wits to get out, watch this, we were forced to trust God totally. Not a bad idea since he is the God that, watch this, raises the dead. He did it. He rescued us from certain doom. And watch this. If he did it before, come on, is there anybody up in here? No. That if he did it before, he can do it. Uh, I'm talking to you online. I'm talking to you, West Palm. Come on. If he did it before, he can do it. In your hard places and dead ends, you get to a point where no amount of money, where no earthly connections, where no friends and no family could help you through it, and there is nothing left to do but trust God. Anybody ever been in that place? Amen. Where no matter where you turn, they couldn't help you, but how much of you could shout because when man couldn't help you, God stepped in, and when he stepped in, he said, I'm going to get glory for this and not nobody else. Come on. In your situation, God says... Ain't nobody else going to be able to help you because I'm about to get glory for it. Is there anybody up in here ready for your life to give him glory like never before? Let's hurry up, bring this thing to a close. So watch this. I know David said it like this. Some such in chariots, some trust in horses. But as for me, I will trust in the name of the Lord. I'm here to tell Faith Church, let your trust be in God and God alone. Because man will always fail you, but God will never fail. I need somebody to give a God that is trustworthy a praise in this place. Because he never fails. And so... I finally made sense out of the sense, and I finally saw what the therefore was there for. After I read all of 1 Corinthians 1, and we came back on to 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1, it said, since God has so generously led us in on what he's doing, watch this, we're not about to throw our hands up and walk off the job just because we run into occasional hard times. Is there anybody up in here that you felt like giving up, but all of a sudden God reminded you that you can't give up now because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
I can't walk off the job. I refuse to give up. I refuse to throw my hands in just because I go through some hard times and some difficult situations because if God got me out before, he can get me out again. And if God won't abandon me, I can't abandon him. I can't just throw up my hands and walk off the job. Paul says, remember, our message is not about us. Our message is about our king of kings and our lords of lords. He says, if you look at me, you will miss the glory. If you look at me, you will miss the message. Because at the end of the day, we ain't nothing. But here's what I know. The reason why we could survive when we're between a rock and a hard place is because we got a treasure in this earthen vessel. Come on, that the excellency would be of God and not of us. So Paul is testifying and he's saying, I know we're not much to look at. He says, and even though we're surrounded by troubles, he says, we've got a treasure on the inside of us. And here's what I came to tell Faith Church this weekend. And that is to remind some of you that you're not about to break. Come on, you're about to break through. Come on, let me say it again. I need some faith inside here today and I need you guys if you believe this word is for you to give God a real praise because I don't care what you're going through you are not about to break you are about to break through somebody ought to give God a real praise because this is not your end this is for your beginning come on everybody standing all over come on and as you play some pads here here's what I just came to tell you that God says in the middle of your dead ends, in the middle of your rock and your hard places, just know that I'm not gonna let you go under. Just know that I am the God of your breakthrough. And watch this, if God doesn't take me out of it, he has a purpose for it. He has a plan for it. And I don't know who I'm talking to in here today. Maybe you're online. Maybe you're in Florida. But I just came to tell somebody, this is no time to give up on the God that loves you. This is no time to throw in the towel. This is no time to abandon your hope. I know it may not make sense. I know you may feel overwhelmed. But you serve a God that can do all things but fail. Come on. When you're between the rock and the hard place, remember that you got a rock on which you stand. Come on. And every other ground is sinking stand. You've got the rock of ages on your side. Everybody lifting your hands. Father, I pray for every person in this place. I don't know who they are or where they are, but I know you sent me on an assignment today to let them know that this is not going to take them under. That when they feel like they are breaking and when they feel like they're out of their breath because they don't know how much more they could take, I thank you that you're going to give them a breakthrough. You're going to give them a fresh wind and they will know that this is not the end. This is just the beginning. And if you rescued them before, you will rescue them again. God, we praise you because you are the God of the breakthrough now faith church here's what i need you to do i need you to give god a real praise because he's the god of a breakthrough come on somebody give him a praise because he's the god of a breakthrough come on give him a real praise because he's the god of a breakthrough you're not going to break down you're going to break through this is not the end this is just the beginning god ain't finished with you yet Here's what I want to say before I take my seat and that is this. Problems don't have prejudice. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter your pedigree or your degree. It doesn't matter who you are and where you are. Problems don't have prejudice. And you know I was reading this text in in, in 2 Corinthians and you really should read it because it's a powerful testimony that Paul has. He says, I don't want you in the dark about all of the things that we went through. But if it hadn't been for God, we wouldn't have made it. But here's what Paul said. He said, if it had not been for your prayers, he says, I don't want you in the dark. He said, Corinth, because you've been praying for me, I believe that God helped me to make it through a lot of what the enemy tried to use to take me out. Now, I say that to say this next week, Pastor is getting ready to do a back to school blessing where he's going to pray for every person, every young person. Come on, he's going to pray for our our students as they get ready to go back to school. And here's why that's important. 
that, that's important because I just told you problems don't have prejudice and we need to make sure that our kids are covered and we say devil you ain't gonna have them devil there is nothing you can do in this school season to take them out to distract them to cause them to be out of pocket devil you can't have our kids and so if I were you I would get your kids in this place I will pack this place this coming weekend because pastor is gonna pray and he's gonna make sure that the devil knows that he can't have our kids everybody say God of a breakthrough look at your neighbor say neighbor you're not breaking down you're breaking through Okay, you talk to the wrong person. Turn to somebody else and say, you're not breaking down. You're breaking through. Come on, Florida. Come on online. Shout, I'm not breaking down. I am breaking through.